Well, um, I, I'd like to resume uh, my report on Article uh, 11 concerning the taxation of interest. Before, I said that paragraph 2 reserves a right to interest to the state in which the interest arises, but it limits the exercise of that right by determining ceiling for the tax, which may not exceed 10%. Well, this is an example, simple example. Alpha is a company which is resident of state A and it pays interest to Beta Company, which is resident in Italy. In state B, sorry, in state A, tax charged by deduction at the source of 10% when interest is paid. So uh, interest uh, accumulated uh, by Alpha Company is, uh, for example, 100. State A, that there is a deduction of 10% uh, uh, rate on 100 interest accumulated, so uh, the tax charge is uh, 10. Um, so Alpha pay pays to uh, better company interest for 90. Better company, which is a resident in Italy, its uh, uh, taxable income is uh, uh, 100 because 100 is interest accumulated. In Italy, the, the gross tax levied on business income uh, has a 24% rate. So the gross tax is 24 for beta company. But Italy have to um, apply a tax credit for 10 because 10 is the deduction of, uh, uh, on uh, interest in state A. So, Beta Company pays taxes on uh, uh, this uh, interest for 14 on his, uh, its uh, business income. Well, note, in certain cases, the approach adopted in paragraph two, which is to hello source uh, taxation of payments of interest, can constitute an obstacle to international trade or may be considered inappropriate for other reason. For instance, when the beneficiary of the interest has borrowed in order to finance the operation which earns the interest, the profit realized by way of interest will be much smaller than the nominal amount of interest received. If the interest paid is equal to or exceeds the interest received, there will be either no profit at all or even a loss. The problem in that case cannot be solved by the state of residence since little or no tax will be levied in that state where the beneficiary is taxed on the net profit derived from the transaction. The problem arises because the tax in the state of source is typically levied on the gross amount of the interest regardless of expenses incurred in order to earn such interest. In order to avoid that problem, creditors will in practice tend to shift to the debtor the burden of the tax levied by the state of source sorry, on the interest uh, on the interest and therefore increase the rate of interest charged to the debtor whose financial burden is then increased by an amount corresponding to the tax payable to the, to the state of source. The OECD 
G20 base erosion and profit shifting, so called BEPS project, have addressed a number of abuses related to, to cases such as the following one. The beneficial owner of interest arising in a contracting state is a company resident in the other contracting state. All or part of its capital is held by shareholders resident outside that other state. Its practice is not to distribute its profits in the form of dividends, and it enjoys preferential taxation treatment. Whilst Article 29, so-called Entitlement to Benefits, addresses the treaty shopping aspects of that case, states wish to deny the benefits of Article 11 to interest that enjoys a preferential tax treatment in the state of residence and may consider including in their convention specific provisions. Paragraph 3 specifies, specifies sorry, the meaning to be attached to the term interest for the application of the taxation treatment defined by the R. The term designates, in general, income from debt claims of every kind, whether or not secured by mortgage and whether or not carrying a right to participate in profit. In order to paragraph uh, four, uh, does not paragraph four does not stipulate that interest arising to a residence of a contracting state from a source situated in the other state must, by a kind of legal presumption or fiction even, be related to a permanent establishment which that residence may have in the latter state, so that the said state would not be obliged to, um, to retain its taxation in such a case. This paragraph four merely provides that in the state of source, the interest is taxable as part of the profits of the permanent establishment that are owned by the beneficiary, which is a resident in the other state. If it is paid in respect of the claims forming part of the assets of the permanent establishment or otherwise effectively connected with that establishment. In that case, Paragraph 4 relieves the state of source of the interest from any limitation under the Article 11. Paragraph 5 lays down the principle that the state of source of the interest is the state of which the payer of the interest is a resident. It provides for an exception to this rule in the case of interest bill loans which have an obvious economic link with a permanent establishment owned in the other contracting state by the payer of the interest. If the loan was contracted for the requirements of that establishment and the interest is borne by the latter, paragraph five determines that the source of the interest is in the contracting state in which the permanent establishment is situated, leaving aside the place of residence of the owner of the permanent establishment, even when he resides in a third state. The purpose of paragraph six is to restrict the operation of the provision concerning the taxation of interest in case where, by reason of a special relationship, between the payer and the beneficial owner, or between both of them and some other person, the amount of the interest paid exceeds the amount which would be agreed upon by the payer and the beneficial owner had they stipulated at harm's length. This is uh, the uh, article uh, which concern the taxation of royalties. The first paragraph uh, established that royalties arising in a contracting state and beneficially owned by a resident of the other contracting state 
shall be taxable only in that other states. Well, in principle, royalties in respect of licenses to use patents or in the similar property and similar payments are income to the recipient from a letting. The letting may be granted in connection with uh, an enterprise, for instance, the use of literary copyright granted by a publisher or the use of a patent granted by the inventor or quite in the, independently of any activity of the grantor. For example, use of a patent granted by the inventor's heir. Paragraph 1 lays down the principle of exclusive taxation of royalties in the state of the beneficial owner's residence. The only exception, sorry, to the, this principle is that made in the cases dealt with in paragraph 3. The requirement of beneficial ownerships was introduced in paragraph 1 of Article 12 to clarify how the article applies in relation to payments made by intermediaries. It may explain that the state of source is not obliged to give up taxing rights over royalty income merely because that income was paid direct to a resident of a state with which the state of source had concluded a convention. The term beneficial owner is therefore not used in a narrow technical sense. Rather, it should be understood in its context and in light of the object and purposes of the convention, including avoiding double taxation and the prevention of fiscal evasion and avoidance. Relief or exemption in respect of an item of income is granted by the state of source to a resident of the other contracting state to avoid in whole or in part the double taxation that would otherwise arise from the concurrent taxation of that income by the state of resident. Paragraph two, contains a definition of the terms royalties. This relate, in general, to rights or property constituting the different forms of literary and artistic property. The elements of intellectual property specified in the text and information concerning industrial, commercial or scientific experience. The definition applies to payments for the use of, or the entitlement to use, rights of the kind mentioned, whether or not they have been, or are required to be, registered in a public register. The definition covers both the payments made under a license and compensation which a person would be obliged to pay for fraudulently copying or infringing the right. The definition does not apply to payments that, whilst based on the number of times a right belonging to someone is used, are made to someone else who doesn't himself own the right or the right to use. Where a payment is in consideration for the transfer of the full ownership of an element of property referred to in the definition, the payment isn't in consideration for the use of or the right to use that property and cannot therefore represent a royalty. Payments that are solely made in consideration for obtaining the exclusive distribution rights of a product or service in a given territory do not constitute royalties as they are not made in consideration for the use of or the right to use an element of property included in the definition. 
as regards software, difficulties can arise in the case of a transes, transfer of rights that could be considered to form part of an element of property referred to in the definition where these rights are transferred in a way that is presented as an alienation. For instance, this clause is granting of all rights to an intellectual property for a limited period or all rights to the property in a limited geographical area in a transaction structure as a sale. Note, Italy and Spain hold the view that payments in consideration for the transfer of the ownership of an element referred to in definition of royalties fall within the scope of this article, where less than the full ownership is transferred. This is the regulation of uh, Article uh, 13, which uh, concerns the taxation of capital gains, but I don't uh, uh, deal with uh, it. Um, now, a few words uh, about uh, the taxation of... Um, ah, sorry, this is Article 14, concerning independent personal services, uh, which was deleted 20 years ago, because uh, um, there were non-intended differences between the concepts of permanent establishment, as used in Article 7, and fixed base, as used in Article 14, or between how profits were computed and tax was calculated according to which of Article 7 or 14 applied. Um, the last uh, argument which uh, I'd like to deal with is uh, Article 15, uh, which concerns the taxation of income um, from employment. Well, the first uh, paragraph says that subject to the provision of Article 16, 18, and 19, salaries, wages, and under similar remuneration derived by a resident of a contracting state in respect of an employment shall be taxable only in that state unless the employment is ex exercised in the other contracting state. If deployment is so exercised, such remuneration as is derived therefrom may be taxed in that other state. Well, paragraph one established the general rule as to the taxation of income for employment other than pensions, that such income is taxable in the state where the employment is actually exercised. Employment is exercised in the place where the employee is physically present when performing the activity for which the employment income is paid. One consequence of this would be that a resident of a contracting state would derive remuneration in respect of unemployment from sources in the other state could not be taxed in that other state in respect of their remuneration merely because the results of this work were exploited in that other state. The issue of whether or not services are provided in the exercise of unemployment may sometimes give rise to difficulties. The condition provided by the article for taxation by the state of source is that the salaries, wages, or uh, other similar remuneration be derived uh, from uh, the exercise of employment in that state. This applies regardless of when that income may be paid to, credited to, or otherwise definitively acquired by the employee. In some cases, it may be difficult to determine which part of salaries, wages, and other similar remuneration paid to an individual is derived from the exercise of employment in a given state 
For instance, granting of stock option to an employee who exercises his employment in different states. Any remuneration paid after the termination of employment for work done before the employment was terminated, for instance, a salary or bonus, bonus for the last period of work or commission for sale made uh, during that period, well, any remuneration will be considered to be derived from the state in which uh, the relevant employment activities were exercised. Paragraph 2 contains a general exemption to the rule in paragraph 1. This exception covers all individuals rendering services in the course of an employment, sales representatives, construction workers, engineers, etc. To the extent that the remuneration does not fall under the provision of other articles, such as those applying to government services or entertainers and sport persons. The three conditions prescribed in this paragraph must be satisfied for the remuneration to qualify for the exemption. Exemption is limited to the 183-day period, days, dur days during which uh, the taxpayer is a resident of the SAR state should not be taken into account in the calculation. The employer paying the remuneration must not be a resident of the state in which the employment is exercised. In the third condition, is uh, if the employer has a permanent establishment in the state in which the employment is exercised, the exemptions is given on condition that the remuneration is not borne by that permanent establishment. Well, what are uh, BEPS? Base erosion and profit shifting, BEPS, refer to tax planning strategies used by multinational enterprises that exploit gaps and mismatches in tax rules to artificially shift profits, thus eroding the tax base of the higher tax jurisdiction through deductible payments such as interest or royalties. Two, low or no tax locations where there is little or no economic activity, resulting in little or no overall corporate tax being paid. There is a perception that existing national rules give businesses too much opportunity for arbitraging tax rates and regimes. BEPS practices cost countries uh, about uh, 100 to uh, 240 billions of dollars. This is an estimate uh, in 2017. And um, these practices cost uh, in lost revenue annually, which is the equivalent to 4 to 10 percent of the global corporate income tax revenue. OECD G20 inclusive framework on BEPS. So, is a project in which over 135 countries and jurisdictions are collaborating on the implementation of 15 measures to tackle tax avoidance, improve the coherence of international tax rules, and ensure a more transparent tax environment. This is the list of the 15 measures. And um, the this is uh, uh, the, the, the action 15 concern the multilateral convention to implement tax treaty related measures to prevent base erosion and profit shifting. Uh, it offers concrete solution for government to close loopholes in international, uh, international tax treaties by transposing results from a DBPS project into bilateral tax treaties worldwide. 
It's very important to underline that uh, MLI allows governments to implement a great minimum standards without the need to expand resources in negotiating each treaty bilaterally to counter treaty abuse and to improve dispute resolution mechanisms while providing flexibility to accommodate specific tax treaty policies. I think the time is, is running out and uh, I consider finish my report. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Matteo, for this uh, very interesting uh, overview about uh, OECD. Uh, it's very important for our students uh, to understand uh, the rules uh, in uh, OECD uh, model. So I think uh, uh, your seminar is very, very interesting. Yes, thank you, Matteo. And just a couple of remarks about your interesting uh, lessons. Well, I ask uh, to you if you can go to the previous slides uh, on the 15 action plan that you yeah. show us uh, because thank you because uh, Matteo um, gave us a very interesting overview on the um, articles of the OECD models that now we have seen to avoid double taxation and to approach uh, the international tax law but the BEPS uh, is the future we can say because mm. uh, it actions that now OECD uh, exercising its power of uh, guideline try to give an harmonization of the law in the different states these are all the actions uh, considering in different uh, topics uh, uh, about uh, what the state are going on to do a multilateral also approach of legislation so uh, this could be an interesting uh, approach of uh, uh, to study for the students and thank you Matteo that you give us also the panorama so uh, I think that we're finished yes. and thank you Matteo thank you very much bye thank bye. you for this bye. opportunity bye bye